Welcome to the Fantasy Empire. I'm Theo Greminger. I'm filling in for Nando DeFino this week, and I'm here with my guy, Chris Vaccaro. We're going to go over everything that happened last week, get you ready for this week. And Chris, we got to talk about the Christian McCaffrey teams because McCaffrey, there was a couple of people that were kind of fading him a little bit. You know, we're talking about a year seven back, and mm -hmm. the guy's just been unbelievable through two games. The usage has been crazy. And you're certainly feeling a lot better as a Christian McCaffrey drafter than you are like a Jamar Chase drafter. So there's definitely a huge win rate edge right now. Where are you at on McCaffrey? How much exposure do you have? And is this going to keep up? Theo, first off, thanks for filling in for Nando uh, this uh, week. Uh, we wish him all the best. I'm not going to bust. So any group. usual listeners, I'm not going to not going to bust Chris's balls. Like yeah, Nando it's not going to be, it's it's not, it's not, right? This is friendly today. But yes, keep going. Sorry to interrupt you, Chris. No, um, Theo, uh, Christian McCaffrey, I got to be honest, as always, um, he was a full fade for me early in the first round. OK, um, you know, I was going heavy wide receiver early if I got a top four pick with Tyreek Hill or Jamar Chase, which we'll get into that, I'm sure. And if not, I was just going down the board and, and uh, you know, taking my backs uh, at the end of the first round. So I never landed on McCaffrey, uh, Theo. In my opinion, right now, that's looking like it could be a season changing, a season changing mistake just because yeah. of the usage we're seeing. I think you you, you touched on it, Theo, um, you know, going into year seven, always nicked up, injury prone. Um, and, you know, I didn't love the offensive line that they were showing me, uh, you know, early in the season, um, you know, coming into the season. I'm sorry. And that's uh, one of the reasons why I tried to stay away from him. But after what I've seen for two weeks mixed in with the, um, you know, the carnage going on right now at the running back position, we just lose Nick Chubb and uh, the inefficiency of a lot of other running backs. I think Christian McCaffrey, if he keeps this up, this uh, potential, you know, usage that he's seeing every week, we could be looking at the difference like we saw last year with the Travis with Travis Kelsey at Kelsey at the tight end position. It might be a huge gap here. Now let's give credit. Like, you know, listen, there's Tony Pollard, Bijan Robinson. These guys can factor in here. But when you look at teams across the board after two weeks and what their running back situation is in fantasy here, you know, you're praying for 10, 12 points out of a lot of these guys here. There's no definite 25 points with the, chance of the 30 35 week blowups here other than a Christian McCaffrey and and possibly hopefully Bijan Robinson and Tony Pollard so I just think he could be that difference maker at the running back position yeah it's it's definitely an edge especially when you factor in the Jamar Chase off to this incredibly slow start you mm -hmm. know you're feeling great about your Tyreek Hill pick you're feeling great about your Justin Jefferson pick but it was like the the Jamar Chase slow start really really has hurt a lot of teams especially the teams that kind of leaned into correlation uh, with mm -hmm. Joe Burrow, which we're definitely going to get to next. What are your I don't initial... Think there's any doubt, Theo, I think you would agree. I don't think there's any doubt that if we redrafted right now, McCaffrey would be locked in as the number two pick in drafts after Justin Jefferson, correct? Yeah, and I think you'd actually see a lot more Christian McCaffrey at the 101 just I because won. we know the positional, like you discussed, the positional yeah. difference. So, yeah, it's you know it's the square thing to take the the older guy. Mm -hmm. And to take those older running backs, but sometimes it hits, especially when, you know, like you touched on the, it's just been carnage, Eckler, Barkley, Chubb. Uh, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess right now for early running back drafters. We You're already quick... lost JK. We already lost JK Dobbins. Aaron Jones is, is signed line for who knows how long, um, you know, now you have lost Montgomery David... for a couple yep. of weeks. Then you look at all the running backs that were going, you know, Najee Harris is a slug. He looks terrible. We could go on and on. You know, these middle round running backs, they were, they're looking like more misses than hits. And who's coming in to save the day here are the later round running backs or the free agent running backs. The, you know, the, the guys that we took in the eighth, ninth round, the Brian Robinsons of the world. Uh, you know, Zach Moss had a nice week. Uh, DeAndre Swift, Kyron Williams, you know, these, you know, four, five, six backs. These are the guys right now you want on your team that are going to help you. Raheem Mostert, you know, these are the guys that we're putting in right now. And if you compare them up with a Christian McCaffrey, you're in running back heaven right now. So, yeah, it's crazy because we have actually back-to-back -back years now of 
these really low drafted running backs or free agent running backs coming in and getting early returns. Like last year, you had the Cordero Patterson started out the season hot. You had Jamal Williams start out the season hot. Now this year, like you touched on, Kyron Williams is your RB2 overall. Mm-hmm. Your RB3 overall is Brian Robinson. Your RB4 is Pollard. Your RB5 is Bijan. But right. your RB6, Chris, you know, I heard you and Nando talking about it here on the Fantasy Empire a couple weeks back, how, how much into Raheem Mostert you were and about how he would give people a fast start. And you're absolutely right. He's RB6. Let's get your quick thoughts on Bijan Robinson before we take a break. Listen, uh, he's lived up to the hype. You know, I know a lot of people are a little, you know, a little scared because of the, um, you know, the workload that Algiers getting. But I'm fine with that. You know, um, he's getting the workload in the pass game. If he's chipping in, you know, four or five catches every week and he's out there uh, and he, he got, I think, 18 carries this past week. It's is a run heavy offense. There's more than enough touches uh, to go around. Like we just said, there's not that many Christian McCaffrey's in the world. There's only one that's getting 100 percent of the snaps. But listen, back to back weeks of 20 fantasy points. Right now, Bijan Robinson would be my RB two for the season going forward. Um, you know, so he's a solid pick. I have no problems with him. You had a you had a life or death decision at the end of the uh, first round there at the turn with Bijan Robinson, Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley right there. That's where all my shares of you know all my teams have one of these three running backs, and I you know I'm sure just like you, Theo, got devastated this past couple of days. Losing Nick Chubb for the season. Hopefully, this Barkley news is not as uh, bad as we initially thought. Uh, I assume he'll miss week uh, week three here. But after that, I think we'll have him back, and then that might save us at the running back position in the first round. Yeah, Bijan Robinson on pace for eighty five receptions. It's 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 wild times. You know, we had concerns about them using him as a receiver. Mm-hmm. We didn't have any concerns about you know them you know, running him into the ground. And it's actually been like super fantasy friendly. Like you touched on Tyler Algier keeps him nice and fresh and he gets all of the high value, uh, high value touches. So we love it. We're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. And when we come back, Chris and I are going to discuss zero running back strategy and how it's working out. We're also going to touch on some concerns we have about these elite quarterbacks right now. This episode brought to you by Mojo. Mojo is that player stock market. We love Mojo because we like making lifetime bets on players. You run out the clock on these guys. Mojo just rolled out a brand new fantasy platform. That's right. So now you can build a portfolio of player props. Oh, Jamar Chase over 77.5. Oh, Kadarius Tony under 15.5. Whatever the under is on Kadarius Tony doesn't matter. You can just stack up the props in your portfolio. And the beauty is... Once the Sunday games kick off, it's not over. It's not over until it's over with Mojo because once those games kick off, you can then move in and out of positions. Let's say that you're well ahead of expectations. You can cash out. Let's say you're behind expectations. You're underwater. Well, you can double down. That's what makes Mojo so special, why they're different. Check it out. Go to the App Store. Get the Mojo app and use the promo code UNDERWORLD. The promo code UNDERWORLD. Gets you a 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. So the promo code is UNDERWORLD, and they will match your deposit dollar for dollar. Go to Mojo, start building your portfolio, and then during the games, you can be a fantasy day trader. Welcome back to Fantasy Empire. I'm Theo Greminger filling in for the great Nando DeFino, and I'm joined by Chris Vaccaro. Chris, you told me about what you, your thoughts on Bijan Robinson. Tony Pollard was a guy that you took, I took. We got to be feeling really pretty good about those Tony Pollard exposures. I think that you touched on Bijan. If we're going to pick like a guy that's going to finish as RB one overall at this point, and it's not Christian McCaffrey, I think it's going to be one of those two guys. Mm-hmm. Where are you at on Pollard and the usage and what you've seen? Oh, absolutely love it. You know, it's a, it's been a dream, you know, uh, at the turn, uh, you know, he went between that 12th and 18th pick. Uh, a lot of second round shares of, of Tony Pollard for me. And that's looking great right now, Theo, as it is, I'm sure, for all of us. Um, I, I, you know, we just talked about Bijan being RB2 for the year. He's right there. You know, I'd be I'd have Pollard RB2, RB3 rest of the year. 
the offense is great. The usage is great. Um, no complaints at all. I think this is going to be, you know, with these three guys, and we have to include Barkley as long as he doesn't miss more than one or two games here. These four guys, I think, Theo, it's a huge advantage for the rest of the season in fantasy because none of these other mid-round running backs look like they're going to pop and come through. Maybe James Cook can step up and be a top 10 running back, but the usage-wise for him, um, you know, it'll never get to the level of the Tony Pollards and Bijans and everybody here. So these four running backs, when you come across these teams every week that you're up against, okay, or in an overall contest, this is a huge advantage. And, you know, there's plenty of good receivers out there that are giving us 20 points. But who can you rely on and put and plug into your uh, lineup every week other than these four running backs rest of the season and go, I got 20 points coming to me? You know, yeah. uh, you might have a couple, you know, duds here and there where they give 10, 12, 13 point games. But these four guys are going to carry fantasy teams the whole season, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Um, you know, having a 20 point per game scorer this year at the running back position is going to matter a lot more than maybe a couple other years because mm -hmm. uh, you're definitely going to stand out. We got to react to the news, though, today. Jerome Ford last night, if you're in a league with Tuesday waivers, he you had to drop a huge bag if he was available. I know I had one buddy, as I'm sure you do, you get some texts from friends, you know, who should I bid on? How much should I bid? No, oh, yeah. And I said, you know, make it rain. It's yeah. Jerome Ford season. <laughs> and uh, he just texts me about the Kareem Hunt signing. And I'm like, I'm not, I personally think it's Jerome Ford in like a somewhat of a Nick Chubb role and Kareem Hunt in the Kareem Hunt role, but not nearly as good as Kareem Hunt was. And they made a point of when they, when they didn't resign him mm -hmm. to point out that they thought he lost speed and like explosiveness. It was a weird yeah. kind of kick in the butt on the way out the door for no reason uh, but I guess they were trying to justify it to their fan base, and now they're bringing him back. What are your thoughts on this? What's the split going to look like? Uh, if he was – and I know – Chris, let me ask you this. How many leagues of yours is Jerome Ford available in? Because for me, there's one single FFPC 350, yes. NFFC zero. So it's like it's – it's, we don't have Theo, – that's really funny because I went through all my teams, okay? I have just 52 of them, Okay. He was available in one online championship. And I think it's only because somebody was desperate last week and dropped Ford off their bench. So he's available in one. Uh, we'll see what he goes for tonight. I'm expecting 750 plus uh, out of a thousand. Um, I see the situation exactly like you do. They had a chance to bring in Kareem Hunt. They didn't want to. I'm a little surprised they gave him $4 million. Okay. Uh, that I thought that was a heavy price to bring him back in, but he knows the system. I don't think he'll factor in much. I think he'll factor in even less than he did last year. Uh, I think he'll just be a change of pace spell, you know, come in and, and spell um, Jerome Ford. But same as you, Theo, Jerome Ford playing the Nick Chubb role. He looked great the other night when he came in. Um, and Kareem Hunt, I expect him to get maybe, you know, six to eight touches a, a game tops. And that's it. So very little fat to throw on him, even if he's available, which most people have been stashing Kareem Hunt. Like, uh, you know, like he's Walter Payton. Yeah. Um, you know, it, there's there's worse outcomes, though, for the Kareem Hunt stasher. I mean, you're feeling decent because at least, you know, Chris and I could be wrong. It could be more of a split, but I, I don't see it. I just don't. And I'll say that the other factor to me is I think Pierre Strong is a talented running back. He's mm -hmm. the least familiar with the system there. He's only been there for a short period of time, but he looks explosive to me every time he touches the ball. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, we can stay on the Browns real quick because where where is that? I mean, Deshaun Deshaun Watson is uh, oh the Deshaun it, Watson looks not so good right now. No, no, very underwhelming. Theo through two games, do not like. There was plenty of throws the other night where he wasn't even close, and you know, poor Elijah Moore. Um, you know, again. I don't know what to think of Elijah Moore here, Theo, because, you know, again, he got seven or eight targets the other night. You know, if the ball, if Watson's throws were more on point, Elijah Moore could have, you know, had a more productive night. Uh, he's just very inaccurate right now. It's worrisome for all of us that waited on quarterback a little bit and then said, hey, Watson's our answer uh, in the middle rounds there with a good offense. But um, I guess the only hope right now is, 
Theo is all right. Nick Chubb is out of the offense. Maybe he's got they got to tick up the um, the volume uh, for passing. But do you really want to put the ball in Watson's hands after what we saw the first two weeks? This was going to be a run heavy team with Nick Chubb um, looking phenomenal, by the way. You know, that's what makes it hurt even worse, losing a guy like Nick Chubb on your fantasy team, because I'm still sticking to I thought he was going to make a run at RB1. Still no doubt in my mind uh, after seeing what I saw the first two weeks. But Watson's all over the place, um, and I think he's going to be matchup dependent from here on. I don't think he's a lock it, you know, like a, a lock uh, starter in, in your lineup. I think you have to go with the two QB approach on your Watson teams and mix and match. Yeah, it's it's really it's really unfortunate. I think that that you know, but that's reality, and we need to adjust to the way people are playing and not where we took them at ADP. We have two weeks of data, and you know, we got to we got to kind of roll with the punches here. But let's stick at the quarterback position, Chris, because Mm -hmm. this is a year me and you podcasted plenty of times this summer and this offseason. And we talked about how we anticipated the rise of the quarterbacks in ADP. We were exactly right. And the market might have even been crazier than we could have imagined. You saw, you know, times where Mahomes was selected in the early second round in NFFC drafts. FFPC managers saw that as well. Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, and then as the summer progressed, Lamar Jackson, his steam went way up in FFPC, and then in NFFC, you know, Herbert, Burrow, all these guys got steamed up big time, and we spent a ton of draft capital. Right now, the quarterback position, none of these guys have really had the smash games. Your quarterback one overall right now is Kirk Cousins. Your quarterback two is Jordan Love, and then shockingly, it doesn't even feel that way, Herbert's quarterback three in a lot of formats, but it doesn't feel that way, right? He doesn't feel like doesn't smashing. Feel like so, yeah, is are He's giving you two average games? Do mm-hmm. you think that this is going to work itself out, or do you think this is just going to be a weird year for quarterback scoring? Well, I mean, on an individual basis, I you know I don't think you worry at all about um, a, a Patrick Mahomes, but you know a Jalen Hurts hasn't looked good through two weeks Lawrence is underperformed he gave an average week one a a terrible week two and then you mix in two of the top eight guys that came off the board in a third fourth round Joe Burrow who we've got major problems with now Theo with this calf injury uh and Justin Fields is just looking like he digressed so um you know as a whole going in the elite eight quarterbacks have all underperformed you know, as it, it's crazy to me watching this past Sunday, we entered the second quarter of the one o'clock games and all these elite quarterbacks were, were pretty much on the field and not one of them had a touchdown pass going into the second quarter. And that's crazy to me. You know, these are the guys we paid up for. We're expecting to light up the scoreboards on a weekly basis. And uh, it hasn't happened. Now, our defense is ahead of offenses right now early in the season. Okay, you know, do we want to chalk it up to that? Do I like some of these guys more than the others? Yeah, sure. But this isn't, we haven't gotten the returns yet, right? On taking any of these elite quarterbacks. So uh, we, you know, we signed up for these guys. We signed up for 35 points, NFFC scoring every week, 30 plus, and none of them have given that yet. So, um, I, you know, we'll see. And, and it, I think, it adds injury to insult, Theo, when you see, you know, Tua and Kirk Cousins and guys like this down the board that you could have waited, built your roster a little stronger at the receiver or running back position in that second, third, fourth rounds, and then hit on these guys that just look like they're in the perfect situations with shootouts on a weekly basis. Um, and, you know, Kirk Cousins really just might be the answer at quarterback this year. Um Because through two weeks, he's just firing. He's got the bad defense. It just looks like, you know, he's in a perfect position to be that weekly 30 point, you know, per game uh, quarterback. So that's, you know, that's the way we had to look at the overall quarterback position. Do we wait on it? Try and hit on some of these mid round uh, guys that have the potential to give us the 30 points or you know, sit back and, uh, you know, maybe get a dud from them here and there, but we didn't expect duds from these elite eight guys. And through two weeks, we've been getting them. Kirk Cousins one is interesting, Chris, because you see like Minnesota fans and media will be like, Kirk Cousins isn't winning. I'm like, people in New York would sell their souls for Chris, for Kirk Cousins right now. 
Yeah. Hey, Jets Jets would would pay a king's ransom to have him come in here right now and the guy is just doing nothing but producing especially at a fantasy level and it's completely consolidated TJ Hawkinson, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison. There's so much to like right there in Minnesota. Uh, I think you might have hit on that. We, why weren't why wasn't he included in the elite eight quarterbacks more towards it? You know, you can always get Kirk Cousins 120th overall, 130th overall. He went you know, after the big eight went and then, you know, Watson came off the board and Tua came off the board. And then sometimes it was like either Dak, Daniel Jones or Cousins. He was basically the last quarterback that was there. But when you sat and thought about it and they added TJ Hawkinson, obviously, into this offense last year, you have an elite tight end. You know, you brought in the rookie Addison and drafted him highly. You know, this whole offense just looked on paper like, you know, Kirk Cousins is you know, he's going to be 25 points a game. He could easily be 302 touchdowns or three, but I think we're so jaded with like, all right, he can't run. He, you know, he's not going to add anything into the run game. You know how many leagues I go through, Theo, and you see it too, that we took Daniel Jones over Kirk Cousins. Yeah. You know, and and yeah, Danny, you know, Daniel Jones got the job done in the second half versus Arizona. But he's laid a one and a half game bomb so far. And how confident do you feel on Daniel Jones starting him going forward? I I have my concerns. We're going to know a lot more about Daniel Jones and the Giants offense real quick because that game without Saquon Barkley, you mm-hmm. could have more rushing opportunities. And I think they're going to have to attack that San Francisco secondary. That San Francisco secondary, you know, we talk, you know, we'll talk about Puka Nakua in a little bit, but they gave up 250 yards receiving. Uh, this past weekend to Tutu Atwell and Puka Nakua. I mm-hmm. think the Giants are going to have to attack him with Waller and attack him with their wide receivers. So I think Jones is going to have opportunities for a fantasy-friendly game in a really, really, really tough game for the Giants to win. But I think yeah. at the end of the day, Jones could put up a number. And I think you bring up a great point. It's so early for the whole, hey, I wish I would have switched picks. But every single Deshaun Watson drafter, every single Geno Smith drafter, every single Dak Prescott drafter, could have when they had the opportunity for Kirk Cousins just make that switch and yeah. you'd be loving loving life right now. Um, I got a quick I got a quick discussion point here, Theo, that I wanted sure. to touch on because a friend brought it up to me the other day going into Sunday's lineups, and I think we're at the point now through two weeks, and I don't want to overreact. None of us really want to after two weeks, but at what point do you sit back and even though we drafted these elite eight guys, you know, a guy like Burrow, Fields, when do you go and look down at your bench? Maybe you drafted. Uh, a Jared Goff, a Geno Smith, a Russell Wilson, guys like this that are your backup quarterback and say, you know what, I got to swallow my pride a little bit. And maybe I took Joe Burrow to be my set it and forget it quarterback. But how long do we live and die with Joe Burrow? Do we live and die with him and get off to a one and five start, a one and four start? Or do we put in a Jared Goff and say to ourselves, hey, listen, I know Burrow is my guy, but Right now, Goff is given 30 a week. Russ is given nice production. Uh, Gino, same thing. When do we go and just say, all right, listen, let's scrap plan A and go to plan B and bring in the backup or hit waivers in certain leagues and go bring in these lesser named quarterbacks that don't look fancy at the top of your roster and bench a guy like Joe Burrow? How hard is that to do for us fantasy players? Because that You know, that exact question was posed to me on Sunday morning. Hey, should I bench Burrow? I'm worried about him for Jared Goff. And I was like, listen, I understand the reasoning and the logic behind it with the matchup and everything, but I can't bench him. And at the end of the day, it was a mistake. So at what point do we pull the plug on these big name fourth round quarterbacks, third round quarterbacks and try and get by until things correct themselves and Burrow and Fields get back on track? I think that you you bring up a great point, and I think that that's one of the things that kind of separates very, very good fantasy players with okay fantasy players is I think that it's easy for a lot of us to kind of identify values to draft. Mm-hmm. Some do it better than others, but you know, for the end of the day, we're drafting a lot of the same guys. But I think realizing what you have is in a very important trade in fantasy, and I think you're going to start seeing a couple of people you know putting burrow on their bench for me it would be difficult to do this early in the year i thought harry snowman in the chat had a great uh comment that I, you know you kind of know it through four weeks um but i think you bring up a great point too chris if you have a very solid option for your quarterback too 
maybe you kind of bite the bullet and you don't chase that truly elite magical number, but mm -hmm. you get a winning number that can get you through the week. One quarterback yeah. I'm, I want to touch on is Sam Howell, yeah, who I'm it. very intrigued on. Quarterback 12 right now, and he is available in some leagues. I know if you're an FFPC or NFFC manager or FFWC, if you're listening to this one, the high stakes managers are going to be able to pick up Sam Howell in, let's say, 25, 30% of leagues right now. And he's quarterback 12. And Chris, this is like real life football and fantasy football intersecting where they play Buffalo in Washington and then they play Philadelphia in Philadelphia the next two weeks. And mm -hmm. then they have a fantasy friendly game against Chicago in week five. Yeah. This is like people are going to wake up to Sam Howell. All he needs to do is win one of these two games, and it's like Sam Howell mania. Where are you at on the kid? Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, that's another two names I wanted to bring up with Sam Howell and Brock Purdy, guys like that. Like, you know, right now Sam Howell's getting the job done, okay? And he's got some weapons. Um, you know, let's see what happens with uh, Logan Thomas and his concussion. But if he comes back, he's added a nice wrinkle for a third option in this offense, uh, you know, and they have the weapons, you know, Terry McLaurin and, and uh, Dotson uh, at receiver with a nice third and Curtis Samuel. He's got the options. He could get it done running Sam Howell. And this is one of those guys where maybe you take him off waivers. Maybe you already took him in the 19th, 20th round and you bring him into your starting lineup right now. The kid's hot. He's got the hot hand. The offense looks good. Another team with an uh, average to below average defense. So you could see them playing these back and forth games. Okay. He threw for what? 300, 299 and, and two yeah. touchdowns this past week. And like I said, he can take off and run when needs be, uh, when need be. So yeah, you know, he was, he was looked at as like that, you know, backup too. If you, if you drafted the Jalen Hurts and, and Mahomes of the world, you see a Sam Howell in the 19th, 20th round of some rosters, if he was even drafted at all. But yeah, he's that guy. If he's available on your waivers, you want to make a, a nice little bid and, and bring him on your team and you could fill in, or maybe he is the answer for your Joe Burrow problem right now. So absolutely. Sam Howell needs to be treated, uh, you know, as a, as a legit fantasy starter. It current. reminds me. It reminds me a little bit about da uh, like Daniel Jones last year, mm -hmm. where Daniel Jones last year gets pushed down in drafts big time. He finishes as like quarterback eight. You yeah. bring up the quality of the weapons in Washington, and Eric Bieniemy just gets it. Uh, shout out to the Athletic because I got the stat there <laughs> that Washington has attempted five running back screen passes, la and that that's the most in the league. Last year they had ten total running back screen pass attempts for the whole season. The offense has changed really quickly, and mm -hmm. they're they're amplifying the house strengths. I love it. And why don't you keep talking? And, a and maybe bit a couple weeks ago, and maybe sorry, Theo, maybe a yeah. couple weeks ago, we were a little off, uh, you know, a little down. Not you know, Sam Howell wasn't maybe an afterthought just because you know Terry McLaurin coming into the season with a toe injury, we didn't know if he was going to miss time. And then you looked at the offense as a whole, and you're like, yeah, hey, what does this offense got? What do what do you? bringing you know to the table to give sam howell a shot at being fantasy productive uh productive and now you look up two weeks in and he's getting the job done and he's got all his weapons and um yeah he's he's definitely on my radar touch more on brock purdy chris because you just brought him up he's yeah. quarterback quarterback 18 but they mm -hmm. haven't had to do anything the pittsburgh game was like he throws two touchdown passes to brandon Ayuk, but they absolutely roll and they're they're just looking like maybe the best team in the NFC right now. Mm -hmm. Ayuk's a little bit banged up. Yeah, but worries. yeah, I don't think he's going to play this week. If you have Ayuk, I think yeah. you know I'm getting ready Plenty. to take him out of my lineups. Um, mm -hmm. But your thoughts on on Purdy and how he looks to you, and your thoughts on him rest of the season. Well, just real quick on the on the Ayuk. If you're an Ayuk owner, you want to put a couple bucks on the kid Jennings. Uh, yeah. You know, he's a solid three. He doesn't get much love, much play because of the big three that they have there. You know, obviously with Debo, Ayuk, and Kittle, who isn't really even factoring in right now. So that's the that's the great part right now of being a Debo and Ayuk owner is you have this offense that funnels through the two of them in the pass game. They're gonna see those eight to ten targets each every week. But it does look like Ayuk is going to be a little uh, – might sit out this week with what people are saying, AC joint uh, strain. You give him an extra 10 days to recover until his next week. Uh, Purdy, I, I, you know, he was that guy that a lot of people were saying, hey, listen, if I wait on quarterback, I think I could get by with a combination of something and Purdy. You know, he was in the – he was in a 
a, a nice offense coming into the season here when you saw all the weapons. And the kid just picked up where he left off last year. So he's I don't think he's got the upside because of how much McCaffrey uh, the McCaffrey gets used running the ball. I don't think he's got that upside of 35, 40 point weeks, those spike weeks. But I think he's that solid. If you have a loaded roster and you just, you know, are struggling at quarterback, you put him in and he's that safe 22, 23, 24 points uh, a game type quarterback. He's never going to bomb out and, and throw for 110 and no touchdowns. He's just a solid, I don't want to call him a game manager, Theo. Um, I don't want to just say he's driving the bus here, but he's that solid 250 and, a, and two touchdown type quarterback uh, every week. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Game man, I, I don't think game manager is is the worst uh, worst insult you can throw out when a guy has yeah. that kind of those kind of horses on his offense. Yeah, and you bring up the McCaffrey factor, like they haven't had to throw to McCaffrey. We haven't had like a neutral game script yeah. or a game where they are potentially trailing. It's just been like pure domination. So yeah. you know it that might be again this year, and it might yeah. be and it might be again this week with this you know banged up giant team that other than the second half has looked like crap for six quarters before that. And their defense is struggling. It might be another runaway on a, on a short week where you see one of these games where it's San Francisco up 24 to three at halftime. And then they cruise. You want to get into these games where, and they will have, you know, they'll have these matchups down the road where they need to, to go back and forth. Everybody loves the San Francisco defense so much. I still think they can be had in the secondary. So I think they will have some of these games where they play a little high scoring. And a shout out to the chat. The chat is great right now. Make sure and smash the like button and take the time to subscribe to not only the player profiler feed, but also the fantasy empire. You can find it on any podcast network. Uh, shout out Joey Brown's in the chat. You dropped the 200 burger in the prime time friend yes. of the show, Joey Brown. Great, great performance, Joey, but I'm coming for you as well. I got a couple of primetime teams. I like <laughs> So now I want to uh, take one question from the chat because it's going to lead us into the next one. Mm -hmm. This uh, jelly of the month uh, has burrow, and he's got a Richardson. So he's got two nice options, but he also yeah. wants to discuss Russ Wilson as a spot start. Russell Wilson, there's a lot to like right now. He's quarterback five of the season. Obviously, he had a Hail Mary attempt that, that was completed, but he still completed it. Mm -hmm. And they lost in a disappointing factor to Washington. They had a huge lead, but they get Jerry Judy back. They have Cortland Sutton healthy. Yeah. And you have Marvin Mims, who looks like an explosive player that's ascending. Where are you at on this Denver offense? And where are you at on Russell Wilson rest of the season? I think the arrow's pointing up now, Theo. I don't think we could judge them based on the first couple of weeks. I think you could judge them more a little, you know, what we saw this past week. Judy coming back in, he ran 68% uh, of the snaps. Uh, I think that number goes up to over 85 now, where this offense is Judy and Sutton on the outside. Um, Mims didn't run a lot of routes, uh, but he'll contribute as a nice third. They have some other pieces that they're bringing in. I really thought this offense was going to be just Judy Sutton. Once they lost all the guys they lost and, and especially Dolchich at, at tight end, I was like, wow, this is going to be one of those dream situations for fantasy where the top two receivers are the only ones in the box score, you know? Um, but they're spreading it out a little bit. Russell Wilson, again, to throw in like the Brock Purdy's of the world, that he was going quarterback 17, 18 off the board. This is a guy that you have to consider starting here yes. on a weekly basis. No doubt about it. Uh, he even took off and ran six times for 56 yards. So he's back to, to being, you know, mobile Russ again. So he's helping out in the run, uh, the, the uh, you know, taking off and running. Uh, he threw for over 300 yards. Yeah, I know the Hail Mary make the box score look a little bigger, but – this is a guy that I think is 25 uh, fantasy points a week. So, yeah. But, you know, for um, for this for this particular listener's question here with Richardson and uh, who was his other quarterback? Theo Richardson. He, jo and Joe Burrow and Joe Burrow and Richardson. So he's got the opportunity to stream Russell. Wilson. I would pick up. So I would automatically pick up Russ and play him. But if you miss out on Russ, a little sneaky thing to do this week with, with Burrow on a Monday night, go look at your waivers, see if Stafford's available. And if not, throw with Buck on Jake Browning. At least it takes you to Monday night, buys you the extra week. We don't know how much news uh, we're going to hear uh, up until, you know, we're probably looking at a game time decision for Burrow. You know, maybe that you don't, we don't get the, enough information by Sunday. 
And if you don't want to miss out on starting Joe Burrow versus the Rams, you got to have a quarterback. Uh, you got to have your ass covered on Monday night. At worst, make sure you have the kid Browning for a buck just to just to take it to game time. Breaking news uh, right here on the Fantasy Empire. It sounds like Kendra Miller is going to be active this week in a week that uh-huh. Jamal Williams is out. So the plot thickens, Chris, for Kendra Miller managers. You might see some. Some, lower some, those Tony Jones bid. Lower those Tony it. Jones it. bids, uh, people. I know it's an emergency. Been... <laughs> emergency. Lower your bid from thirty-one dollars to eleven dollars. People are scrambling now, Theo, having to go back and redo their waivers now with the Kareem Hunt news factoring in. They're lowering their Jerome Ford bids. They're upping their Kareem Hunt bids. Uh, Keandre Miller now playing. Uh, you know the Tony Jones bids go away. Everybody's already lowering their Breida bids. Right, because Barkley, we thought he'd miss maybe three weeks, and now who knows? He's a game time decision for Thursday. I, I personally, as a huge, obviously Barkley owner, I hope they don't even play Barkley Thursday. Me neither. Now. It's it's insane. Rest, and it's yeah. it's that's the problem when you have these guys on on one year deals. Yeah, when you have yeah. a guy on a one year deal, you're not concerned about his long term future, no matter what they say. And I know they want, you know, they say Saquon Barkley is going to be mm-hmm. a an, a, a lifetime giant and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't buy it. I don't no. think you know it's it's. But a how tough, gross tough is candidate. the running? How gross is waivers for running back at the high stakes market, Theo? For it's all done. of us across all these big leagues, there's nothing there, and and you don't want to make the mistake of overbidding just to get a piece. But you know we are living in a week to week basis here. We're just trying to get by. There's a lot of teams. You, you know, we don't want to go through all the names again that we've lost whether it's just for a few weeks or, or season long, all these guys. And we're just trying to plug in an RB2 and try and get off waivers. But what are we what are we going for here? Going for guys like Matt Breida, Tony Jones, that may touch the ball less than five times. You don't want to, you know, empty the bag on, on these guys and overspend tonight. So it's a fine line. But the running back position, I feel, after two weeks is already desolate. Uh, not desolate, but already desperate. You're, we're already entering dark days can imagine what it's going to look like when we, you know, look up seven, eight weeks from now. So it's funny, like it depends on kind of what you're going for. Like, I think sometimes paying for a win or paying for two wins in a row, mm-hmm. even if it's a sketchy option, sometimes really works out. And I'll say this, Chris, sure. we've seen two straight years where last year we had a RB one overall week for Deion Jackson. The year before we had an RB one overall week for Deionis Johnson. Yeah. Who's going to be this year's sketchy running back to finish as RB1 overall? Uh, but I'll tell you one running back who is not sketchy, and there's a question in the chat. What are some receivers you target for Kyron Williams? I'm not sure <laughs> trading away Kyron Williams is the right move here. I think, Chris, it's funny because this is a second-year player who is doing this right now. He's definitely not going to finish as RB2 overall, but mm-hmm. he's RB2 overall right now, and the usage – his usage is RB1 like. Like he could finish as a top 12 yeah. running back. They're getting rid of Cam Akers, and Kyron Williams can catch the football. So there's a lot to like about the situation. I think if Kyron Williams was drafted in the third round of the NFL draft and not the sixth round of the NFL draft, people would kind of be head over heels right now. What are your thoughts on Kyron Williams? Oh, uh, I, you know, I hate to use this term, Theo, league winner. But I see. I don't see this holding up. I don't see this stopping all year yep. long. I think he's just one of those backs that you got off waivers, or not waivers, but you know you drafted really late. We see it every year. There's two or three of these guys every year that just come out of nowhere. Whether it's uh, you know they overperform and take over a lead role and they shine, or uh, an injury to a starter comes in. Uh, you know, uh, a guy like a Justice uh, Hill. You know, J.K. Dobbins goes down and, uh, you know, he comes in and and maybe shines the rest of the year. But a guy like Kyron Williams, um, the volume he's seeing and he could get it done in the pass game. I don't see how we don't look at him as a top 15 running back the rest of the season. And for where you got him off the board, these are the type of players that, you know, take your teams to a league championship, an overall championship. You got to plug these guys in and it just helps you with any type of build. You know, if you went. Uh, if you waited on running back and you hit on a Kyron Williams, and now you're loaded at receiver and other positions, and you bring in a, a running back that's going to be a weekly uh, running back that could, could, you know, make a run in an RB one week, uh, it changes the whole dynamic of your teams. You know, so Kyron Williams, uh, I don't know what receivers I would be trading him for, but I definitely mm-hmm. wouldn't be getting. I definitely wouldn't be underselling. 
Keenan Allen, if you want like a wide receiver for Kyron Williams, it better be a guy that's a difference maker, a top 15 type wide receiver. It's crazy that we're talking about that right now. A Keenan Allen for a Kyron Williams. Isn't that crazy how quickly things turn in, in our game? The running back position is the most tilting position in fantasy by by a million right now. Yeah. Like if you start doing your weekly running back rankings mm-hmm. and actually start jotting it on paper, you're shocked by where you have to put guys like Zach Moss, Kyron Williams, Brian Robinson is like a top That's 12 quick. running back. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. it's incredible. Um, But let's stay with the Rams. You mentioned Matt Stafford, who's now passed for 300 yards in back-to-back games. Every podcast in America is going to spend 15 minutes on Puka Nakua. We yeah. both think it's incredible what he's doing. Uh, we don't need to touch on it. It's one of the most amazing things you've ever seen from a rookie, and especially in the first two weeks of the season. But talk to me about your thoughts on Tutu Atwell. Mm-hmm. This is a guy that's going to be available, uh, certainly in a lot of FFPC leagues, he's available. Um, people didn't want to believe it after week one, but he kind of, it's funny because sometimes when you have a teammate pop, guys ignore it, but yeah. he had two teammates pop. So people were into Puka Nakua for a million or Kyron Williams for a sizable amount. And Tutu Atwell just kind of sits there. He has 119 yards in game one. In game two, he has 82 combined yards. I think he's a thing. This is yeah, a guy yeah. who was a second round pick. He's got speed and they're they're using him in really interesting ways. Uh, n- no doubt about it. These guys are both fantasy starters uh, for the upcoming weeks. But I, I think, you know, the million dollar question, Theo, is, you know, how does this offense get affected um, if and when Cooper Cup comes back, you know? Uh, does he, does he come back at all? Uh, you know, if, if he's back week five, now all of a sudden a guy like two, I don't see Puka going away. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't, I think he'll play a nice secondary role to Cooper cup, a healthy Cooper cup come week five, if he's back in the lineups and then a guy like two, two out, well, I think just fades, fades into, you know, a, a third role. And that's when, you know, you look back on a week like this, if he was even available, let's talk leagues that, you know, he's available and, and you don't want to overspend now, and then you get caught with a 2 2 at will that you overspent for, and he's not what you hoped come week five. So, but right now, I think he's a very serviceable flex play wide receiver three. He's seeing the targets. Uh, this offense has opened up. McVeigh's done an unbelievable job. The, uh, the unfortunate losers, it seems like, in this offense with the two guys that were the most highly sought after on the draft boards was Higby at tight end. And Van Jefferson, who I tell you, my shares of Van Jefferson are all getting dumped out tonight in waivers, Theo. So he's gone. Higby hasn't been, you know, we all expected Higby like, oh, my God, that mid-round tight end. If we wait on tight end, Higby's got to see, you know, seven, eight targets a game in this offense. No, out of nowhere, it's Puka and, and it's Tutu Atwell. And, they, you know, these guys are getting the job done. Stafford's got a nice connection with both of them. And uh, they should be in your fantasy lineup, at least until Cooper Cup comes back. And then we got to reassess at that point. It's one of the most rapid personnel changes like we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like McVay's totally remade their big three. Six weeks ago, it was so easy to say it's going to be Cooper Cup, Cam Akers, and Tyler Higby. And now it's this Puka Nakua, Tutu Atwell, and Kyron Williams. And When do you see that? Yeah, Yeah. when do you see like the top three expected targets not be, and then three new targets come in, you know, two, three new targets come into the mix. This whole offense was supposed to be Akers, Higby, Van Jefferson. Now it's Kyron Williams, Puka, and Tutu. So great names, by the way. It's amazing. It's wild times. And let's stick with another uh, Mm -hmm. sneaky source of fantasy production. Nico Collins is a guy that we all drafted now for two years in a row, mm-hmm. and he's starting to have his big year three breakout. Yeah, You feel great about drafting him, and he was drafted in almost eye. every every league. You know, you've been a Nico guy. I have plenty of yep. Nico. Um, I think it's one of those things where Chris and I, where we're in the same draft or we're in the next board, we'll say, oh, nice pick. Nice yeah. pick on Nico, Chris. Yep. <laughs> um, but, but now you have Tank Dell coming into the mix, and I'm mm-hmm. very excited about Tank Dell. I had him very high up in my waiver wire rankings. You can read the article on playerprofiler.com. Tank Dell, last week, he has 10 targets. Uh, He finds the end zone for the first time in his career. He goes over uh, seven receptions. I'm kind of intrigued by this. C.J. Stroud had 384 yards passing last week. This is like that sketchy team that's going to give us uh, some passing volume. It's kind of fun. 
Hundred percent. This is one of those sneaky offenses. I think you could go to, and I'll tell you what: C.J. Stroud is that other quarterback. You know, we talked about Sam Howell earlier. I think the C.J. Stroud production is here to stay. You know, he's a rookie. Uh, he's got some growing pains, but he hit the ground running. I he looks better than all the other guys. Um, you know, to throw for that many yards, three eighty four, a couple touchdowns. He's got weapons he's got um you know a struggling defense he's might be in a lot of these games where he's playing from behind and you know uh tank dell 10 targets all these these three big guys first off nico collins could be one of these guys where just an absolute home run smash pick on the draft board you know he was that guy that after that tier in the seventh eighth round came off the board he was like the last guy that you know you you grab nico collins you said, all right, let's hope that this is the breakout year. And you know what? Through two games, it has been. Um, he's absolutely killed it for two weeks. Now, if he remains as the top target every week, week in, week out, number one, um, he's a set it and forget it wide receiver two. And you drafted him as your four or your five. These are the picks, again, Theo, that make a difference for your fantasy team. But Robert Woods is contributing. You know, I still see Robert Woods on some waiver wires. That shouldn't be the case. Okay. Tank Dell, um, week one, uh, didn't get anything going. Uh, I think he sat out week one, if I'm correct. Yeah, uh, no, but, no. Tank Dell had only a couple of receptions, but yeah. then Noah, Noah Brown goes to IR, and they give him this big, big role. Exactly. So now Tank Dell comes in. He gets the 10 targets. This could be a three-man offense, and who's the, the short end of the stick? Another guy that we thought could possibly, um, you know, uh, be a, a contributor at the tight end position, but Dalton Schultz. He's taking a back seat. He looks like the fourth target in this offense. Another, an, an offense that's struggling on the ground uh, to get anything going on the ground game. Damian Pierce looks like, uh, you know, a, a, a back that might bust out from the middle round. Two again. yards in a cloud of dust, Chris. Yeah, and we all had high expectations for Tank Dell. He was hot at one point in the summer drafting him as somebody that, you know, fantasy players were like, hey, this guy might be the number one for the Texans, the, the rapport he had CJ Stroud demanded the, the Texans pretty much draft him. They, he said, go out and get this guy. He wanted him. Um, Here, and now we're seeing one. it. Yeah. Fun, one, we're fun one for you. Mm -hmm. Dalton Boyd in the chat. Would you drop Zay Jones for tank Dell? Zay Jones. I, I think I'm keeping Zay Jones. Okay. So here's the thing with Zay Jones. Uh, yeah. I, I would keep Zay Jones in this situation, but at the same time, he does have this knee injury that they're, they're really, you know, there's not that much information on. I wonder if this is one of those situations where in a day or two, we just see say Jones going from like a meniscus cleanup or something mm -hmm. like that. And he's out three, four weeks, something like that. Because for them to already say, listen, he's not going to practice the next couple of days. Something's going on there. Um, so I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, you know, you want a piece of that jacksonville offense though i'll say that much and and on a weekly basis a jones could be the number two or you could see what happened this past week where he takes a back seat to the other three guys and he's a you know he's a donut so chris and i compete against each other in the nffc super the new york one uh it's a very competitive league and in that draft nelson Sousa and i selected trevor lawrence uh trevor lawrence is right now quarterback like 23 24 mm -hmm. And we also selected the quarterback two overall, Jordan Love, but he's been on the bench while while Trevor Lawrence is starting. What are your thoughts on Trevor Lawrence? And let me ask you this, Chris. Have you ever been more let down by a game fantasy-wise no. than Kansas City, Jacksonville? It was so oh depressing. Oh, my God. Depressing. Theo, I woke up Sunday morning like, let's go. When is this, ja you know, like counting down the minutes. Jacksonville, Kansas City was going to be the game that, you know, I focused in on the most. Shares of players all over the board. And Trevor Lawrence – you know, it's tough, Theo, because watching that whole game, you know, he had the potential to have so much more of a bigger game. You know, there were four end zone targets that were. Zay Jones you know, could have had could have had two touchdowns. Could have had two. Easy. Calvin Ridley didn't drag a foot. Uh, yep. Zay Jones twice. It was so close to having so much more of a bigger game. But at the end of the day, you know, 12 fantasy points isn't going to get it done in a matchup like that. You know, you have expectations coming in for a game like that, that it's going to shoot out and it has a chance for a 35, 31 game. Trevor Lawrence is the guy, Theo, out of all, you know, the elite guys, him and Herbert. Um, I, I'm not concerned yet, Theo. I'm, I'm really not, you know, it sucks that they 
had below – well, not Herbert. Herbert got the job done, 302 touchdowns. Um, bigger games are going to be ahead for him. But for Lawrence, I'm not worried about him. He's got the weapons in this offense. They just got to open it up. He's got a great matchup this upcoming week versus Houston. I expect him to go right back to the well and put up some you know big-time fantasy numbers. But uh, this past week was a major disappointment, and it's something when you draft a quarterback in the third, fourth round, you don't expect to take. But, you know, it happened. This past week, we had the Seattle-Detroit 37-31 overtime mm -hmm. game. This is the third straight time these teams have played and gone way, way more. over the number. Yeah. Just play every week. We need week. to move into the division with each other. Give us two games of this every year. Just play every week, guys. Yeah. But one one takeaway is – you have like the the fantasy litmus test right now where if you're an optimist, you say Jameer Gibbs had nine targets. Amazing. Yeah. If yeah. you want to be kind of like a pessimist, it's he had seven carries, couldn't do anything with them, and didn't see really additional volume when David Montgomery went down. I have Jameer Gibbs. I feel fine. But okay. there are some people, some people panicking. What's your level of of like Jameer Gibbs returning value at ADP? Certainly he has an opportunity now with David Montgomery out. That's to get more work, but yeah, where, do you, where are you at? Well, let's back the bus up. How would you feel about Jameer Gibbs right now, Theo, if Montgomery was totally healthy and, and you know, we were in that situation after watching the first two weeks of Montgomery's usage as a seventh, eighth round running back selection compared to Gibbs as a third round selection, how would your outlook look at this point? Not as good, but things <laughs> in the NFL have a, have a way of working themselves out. <laughs> Yeah. And, 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 you know, we have to roll with the punches there. So I don't want to take like, 100%. and it's funny because what people got so angry when I tweeted this out, but through two games played, he, he has more receptions than Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey. Each of those guys had like nine receptions each. He had, or, yeah. or he's, he's out received the out received those guys. Reggie Bush, if you want to go real historical, leaped all those guys. He had the really big start. Mm -hmm. But I look at Jameer Gibbs leading Detroit in targets in week two. And thinking this is a guy that his snaps doubled. Yeah. And I always take that Kansas City game kind of like, to me, it's kind of a little bit of a one off the KC game because I think that they had a very conservative game plan to yeah. beat to Agreed. beat the Super Bowl champs. And that's a daunting game on the road. So Great. I'm going to take the optimistic approach, Chris, and we'll take okay. it however we get it. But is it oh. coming this week? Listen, uh, yeah, and like you said, nine targets, seven catches, 40 yards. I mean, he's got a safe floor uh, going forward in this offense. Um, so, yeah, I think you – I don't think there's major concern. I, I just – you know, during draft season, I just wouldn't have spent the third-round pick on him. But here we are, okay? Montgomery's going to be out probably for a couple weeks here, and I, I would just like to see Gibbs get, you know, double-digit carries, Theo. I don't like to see the five, six carries – Give my guy 12 carries here, right, Theo? We'll take 12. We'll take it. We'll 12. take it. I don't want to see Craig Reynolds in the backfield more than I see Jameer Gibbs, but I think you could count on Gibbs getting the five catches a week, and that's going to provide a nice safe floor. And when he pops that big catch and, and touchdown, uh, you know, reception out of the backfield, that's when you're going to see the 20-plus spike weeks. So, um, yeah, uh, listen, Gibbs uh, going forward and while Montgomery is out, I think he's going to be a, a top 12 running back. Josh Reynolds is Love. Josh Reynolds. You know, he might be available in some leagues right now. And mm. Amon Ross, not in mine, Theo, not, not in mine. Not, I not, still not got him league. from, from week one. I not in it's your funny. league. It's funny. He was, he was my 18th, 19th round pick in all my drafts going in. I wanted that free look. I thought he would be the number two option uh, right out the gate in Detroit uh, competing with Sam Laporta, but I felt the offense was uh, could support these guys. And, it would be the Reynolds or Laporta having that nice game that you could plug in and play uh, in the opening week versus the Chiefs. But what's happened since then? The first two weeks, Reynolds is a stud, okay? And all my teams that I thought maybe after week one I'd be dropping him, well, no, he's locked in now on this team going forward. And until – and not even until, you know, Jameson Williams is so far down the road, I think Reynolds is, a, a you know, a solid wide receiver three play in this offense. Add into the fact that Amon Ross St. Brown's got this toe, turf toe uh, possible issue, and you could see them giving more to on Josh Reynolds' plate in this uh, in this offense. So I think he's a solid top thirty six wide receiver play uh, for the for the future here. Uh, Amon no Ross St. Brown news mm -hmm. dropped twelve minutes ago that Amon Ross St. Brown is not practicing today. 
Uh, not, not, not a great, not a, not a great sign on uh, on a Wednesday. Not great, you don't, Bob. You don't, you don't want to see it. You don't want to see great, it. But, Bob, no. but Josh Reynolds, yeah, that's definitely a yeah. guy that if he's available in your league, I would be aggressive to try to get him. Chris brings up Jamison Williams. We, we don't see Jamison Williams till like week Sorry. seven. Yeah. And I think they have the bye week the week before he comes back. So you might not see him till, till week eight. Um, it's going to be definitely a weird one. Let's talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oof. Tampa Bay is 2-0 and right now. Yeah. Baker Mayfield uh, passed for his first 300-yard passing game since like early 2021. Mike Evans had a heck of a game. And they're sixth in the league in in running back uh, rush attempts. So Rashad yep. White, uh, you know, after game one, there was all the panic in the streets. And then Rashad White has a big game in in week two against Chicago. Tampa Bay, can they keep this up? And Tampa Bay, they, they play uh, Philadelphia this week. So this is in Tampa Bay. This is going to be an exciting game, Chris. And this Philly defense, you know, I think it's a little over, not, I don't want to say overrated, but they could be had in the secondary. They're banged up. Uh, We just saw it. We just saw it with Minnesota, uh, you know, putting fantasy points up. So I expect nothing different here uh, from Tampa. But, you know, when you talk about Tampa and can they keep it up? Yeah, guess what? uh, You know, I talked about it with Nando a few weeks ago right here. you got to look at this Tampa Bay offense. They are going to be the 2022 Seattle Seahawks with Mike Evans in the DK role. And, and, and again, you know, we talked about it. Who on the draft board was going to be this year's DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett? Uh, you know, Tampa Bay, nobody wanted a piece of this offense. And after two weeks, Mike Evans is an absolute steal uh, on the you know on the draft board for where he was going. Nobody wanted Mike Evans in those middle rounds. And he's put up two big games, and uh, the targets are there. It's another offense. We talked about like a Judy Sutton in, in Denver being, you know, so confined. This offense, um, other than Kate Otten getting some targets a- as well, uh, it's all Godwin and Evans. And there's going to be bigger days ahead for Chris Godwin. That Those blow-up games, the eight for 90 and two touchdowns are coming for Chris Godwin as well. It's not just always going to be Mike Evans. But these two guys every week are going to be solid wide receiver ones or twos. And uh, so this Tampa offense, until Baker uh, implodes and hopefully he could just be, you know, what he's been the first couple of weeks, drive the bus, get the ball out to Evans and um, and Godwin. And we're rolling here in Tampa. It's going to be a solid under the radar offense. Shout out to Permar in the chat. Uh, is Sean Tucker, Tucker worth 100%. holding on to a million percent? 100%. Percent. 100% because, just because, listen, part, you know, any backup, any RB2 on any team, we've just seen what we've seen the first two weeks. You're one play away from having a starting running back that off waivers is going to command 50% plus of your, your fab uh, budget. So, yeah, there's a reason why, Theo, in our leagues, that not only is the backup, uh, you know, rostered, the backup to the backups are, are rostered in a lot of these leagues. So, um, injuries happen every week. Running backs are going down. There should be no backup running back getting snaps that is on waivers right now. Yeah, I agree. And shout out to Harry Snowman. Yeah, I was on Tampa this summer because it was like, I don't want to draft Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't want to draft Arizona Cardinals. Well, you gotten good re- return on James Conner picks mm-hmm. and you've gotten great returns on your bucks. And another one. Chris, one interesting thing with Baker Mayfield that they're doing is he hasn't had the production but every week they're giving him rush designed rushing attempts mm-hmm. uh, where he's getting like five or six runs a game. Yeah. He's going to have a smash game if they keep they giving him that because he's going to, yeah. he's going to break off a big run. So I'm, I'm going to take a optimistic approach. And I think like in this off season, we all wanted to like the, a lot of fans were like, it's a rebuilding year. Tampa Bay doesn't rebuild. They're in a division where they don't have to. Right. They're, they have a, they have talented players on both sides of the ball and they have talented players on the offensive line. And they're going for it. So yeah, we're almost at the hour. Mark, all I, year long. I got to ask you about Justin Fields because Justin Fields, they're not running him. That's the problem. And there's been all kinds of issues in Chicago. DJ yeah. Moore had a bounce back game and we have like optimism about Roshan Johnson, but Justin Fields right now, like this is a guy that NFFC and FFPC managers were extremely bullish on. You know, you were seeing him taken side by side with Justin Herbert, and it's been an incredibly frustrating uh, season. He hasn't like given a zero. He's quarterback right. sixteen. 
Average. But it's been it's been very average, below yeah, average. Just, just average, but this isn't what we signed up for, right? We yeah. signed up for that, you know, top eight quarterback that could make a run at QB one or two overall. Um, you expected the the 60 to 80 rushing yards uh, per game. Uh, the only startable piece to me in this offense right now is DJ Moore. Just you add in the fact that th their defense is below average. They're going to have to be playing from behind. Week one was a complete dud for DJ Moore, but that was more on fields um, and than anything else. He doesn't look good to me, Theo. I mean, you see some of these uh, these slow uh, these clips him missing wide open receivers, not even looking their way as they're running free into the end zone. Uh, doesn't pass the eye test at all watching the game on Sunday. Um, in order, you've got to hope for that crazy turnaround that we saw from him last year. Remember the first four or five weeks, he was absolute garbage. People were dropping him. And then all of a sudden he's dropping 40, 50 fantasy points every week because of what he was doing, getting the job done on the ground. So start taking off designed runs. He should be running 10, 12 times a game at minimum, get the fantasy points up. He's always going to be a more of a better fantasy quarterback than a real life quarterback, but that's the game we play. We don't play real life, you know, football. We're playing fantasy football. So start taking off and giving us those big runs. I only worry about real life football if they have a horrible record and they decide to bench a quarterback and you're like, whoa, yes. why are you benching Jameis Winston? He's, you know, quarterback six on the season. Don't yeah. get rid of Jameis. Um, but Justin Fields is super, super uh, like it's tilting because mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like a big game is coming. There's a couple of you games coming up it. where I, you don't want to miss it. Exactly. Yeah, so you don't want to miss it, but what are you going to do? Start own four, Theo? You're that's gonna, right. You're going to take four duds. You can, I mean, and like you said, he hasn't given the game where it's eight fantasy points or whatever. He's just middle in the line. He's given 20, you know, 18, 20 fantasy points, whatever. Uh, it doesn't sink your team. But this isn't what we signed up for. Like, you know, we said I could have drafted Tua or Kirk Cousins eight rounds, seven rounds later and, and got this, uh, you know, and got better production or these numbers. Here's one in the chat, Chris. Yeah. JN is ready to be 0 3. Saquon, <laughs> David Montgomery, Amon Ross St. Brown, Christian Watson, all all hurt, uh, plus Deontay Johnson, the IR. Chris, let everybody know where they can find you in New York City. I think one cool thing about Chris is if you live in New York, Come get a drink or come get a meal uh, down at his bar. Why don't you talk talk about Greenwich, it? A little bit? Yeah, Greenwich Street Tavern down in Tribeca. And it's funny, Theo. Uh, you know, I had one of my athletic um, uh, readers actually. He came in from California for the weekend, and he came to the bar to watch football on Sunday. Introduced himself to me, and uh, we talked a little bit. So it's always great to hear uh, listeners and reader uh, people that read uh, my articles stop in and, and watch football on a Sunday and, and chop it up a little bit. So Greenwich Street Tavern in Tribeca, Lower Manhattan games. We got the games on uh, all Sunday long. At some point I'm going to get Theo in there. For yeah, a I got I got to come in for a football Sunday for sure. And, uh, but I've been yeah. there before. It's a great spot. Really, really cool bar. Really yes. good food. Um, definitely highly recommend it. Chris, let's 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 leave the show with this. Give yeah. us a bold take or give us something you're looking for in week three. Oh, oh my God. Theo. Um, I, I can think... start first if you want to catch your. Oh, get go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. What do you I think we're going to get? Vegas has given us a fantasy gift. You have two 0 and 2 teams. You have the Los Angeles Chargers and you have the Minnesota Vikings. You have yeah. the highest total on the board. It's mm -hmm. like a 54 and a half point total. I think it's going to fly over. I think we Love get an that. old fashioned shootout. Chargers, Vikings. And I think you see. I'll even say say one that's going to make some people upset. I think mm. you see an Alexander Madison game. I think he falls in the end zone twice in this game, and I think that the Vikings are going to. I think it, this game might be like a thirty eight thirty five game, and I think that everybody's going to eat. It's going to be a great game for fantasy. I like that one. Um, I'm going to go back to my Jaguars, and I think Trevor Lawrence bounces back with a uh, three fifty and three touchdown performance. Calvin Ridley comes back to be the apple of our uh, eye. Again, with a uh, you know a seven or eight catch game for over a hundred yards and a touchdown or two, and then all of a sudden we all take a step back and go, all right, we're we're good with our Jaguars in that offense going forward. It's a great get right spot for the offense against Houston. Give us mm -hmm. a New York Giants, San Francisco 49ers. You know, you say like our Jaguars, but mm -hmm. you are a Giants fan, Chris. So give us the the, the scoop. Give give people some hope here. Oh, they go into San Francisco. 
and get it done, or is this going to be a massacre? No, this is a this is a San Francisco twenty seven to to fourteen type game. Um, I think the Giants are happy on their West Coast trip, uh, splitting. They they saved their season versus Arizona. Or they would have been looking at zero and three, and that's uh, you know that's not where you want to be. So they got their win out in Arizona. They take their loss on a short week, banged up. They heal up. They come back. They got Seattle on a Monday night going forward. They get back to two and two. And then the season starts with a healthy Barkley and we go from there. Are you going to play Daniel Jones where you have him or is this a benching? I am not. Uh, I have Daniel Jones in a couple spots. Uh, It's funny because the three teams that I have Daniel Jones on, I have Daniel Jones with Deshaun Watson. And I'm going with Deshaun Watson uh, versus that Titan secondary. Theo, I'm going to pick on that. Uh, Titans are good against the run, but their secondary is all banged up. I'm going to give Watson one more shot here, okay? If he can't get it done and give me a, uh, you know, a 25-point fantasy game versus that Titans secondary, I uh, then I'm really going to start uh, hitting the panic button on Deshaun Watson. But I think he gets it done this week versus the Titans. Well, you heard it here on the Fantasy Empire. Chris, let everybody know when your article drops on The Athletic because it's definitely uh, an article that I enjoy reading. Thank you. Uh, there, every Thursday, uh, my article drops uh, at the Athletic, and uh, you know it's a it's a look at the upcoming week ahead, and uh, from a fantasy angle, and a little look back at what we just saw. So, uh, I try to cover a little bit of everything in my article, and uh, comes out every Thursday morning. Yeah, and if you have waivers tonight, definitely check out my waiver wire article, and then I'm also dropping a sleepers article. And I'm dropping an article on Monday called the two minute drill. So, you know, I'm either writing or I'm right here or I'm driving my kids around somewhere or at the gym. You the can hardest, find me in one of those. The one hardest of those working places. man yeah. in the business right here, guys. There you go, Chris. And uh, stick with the Fantasy Empire every week here on Player Profiler at 1130 on Wednesdays. It's in my weekly must listen. It should be one of your weekly must listens as well. Everybody stick around 1 p.m. I have a press coverage. I recorded it last night. With great Ray show. Garvin, Ray Ray GQ, mm-hmm. we we have a we had a great one. Great uh, one. So definitely watch that one at one o'clock. And uh, Chris, enjoy the rest of your day. Let's get some W's this week. Let's get some wins, buddy. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for tuning in. It's important to me that all of our media be free. This is only possible because of you allowing a true independent sports media enterprise to thrive, unlike any other in the business. So please subscribe to the All In Package to continue to make all this possible to ensure that all of our stats, information, data, content is available to you, especially you, the people that get the site and get the show.